What I remember most from last year when the floods hit was when we woke up that morning and saw five feet of water surrounding our facilities. It was shocking. It was really shocking. Seeing the devastation on the Coquihalla Highway, it's so surreal. It's like, how did so much water get there so fast? We got a knock on the door, the uh, police telling us that the dike had been breached. In the same breath, he said, so are you going or staying? And uh, we said, you know, we've got cattle to look after. And then it came with a vengeance, like a river through here. It's definitely devastating how much road got taken away. But I'm still impressed with how quickly local contractors did the rebuild of the three main sites on our reserve. There was a lot of community spirit the evening of the, the 15th that they told us the pumps were going to fail. Uh, they didn't. 300 volunteers sandbagged all night and uh, the pumps were saved. People helped other people by offering beds, offering property to stay with an RV. It was just all hands on deck 24-7. There were already lots of trailers and farmers rescuing cattle and uh, with one phone call, uh, there the trailers were coming our way. And a year later, we have survived and uh, we're starting to rebound. When these things happen, larger conversations happen in terms of preventative maintenance. How do we build a better diking system, which they're doing now, which we've been asking for for a long time, but it's, it's happening, which is a good thing. I think our community's in a better position now because we all learned that um, we need to stay together and work as one. As British Columbians, uh, we deal with a lot already, but there's a community here that cares for each other very deeply. And I think everyone's getting back on their feet now, which is great.